Maranatha Christian Church is present in nations from all of the continents on this planet, churches from the three Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, and Oceania are connected by the same doctrine, being led by the Holy Spirit of God and united by the Living Word. Brethren from all parts of the world participate in one service, in the same body, and in the same spirit. Through the system of transmission and satellite, members from all over the world live a moment of unity and fellowship, just like the disciples lived with God, with Jesus, before he died on Calvary. People from all of the parts of the world have been reached by this eternal gospel and by the announcement of the brief return of the Lord, of the soon coming of Jesus. We greet the brethren and all of the churches receiving this transmission with the peace of the Lord. We are transmitting this Sunday school for the Maranatha Christian Church from our communication central in Vila Velha in Espírito Santo in Brazil. We have some people participating in the Sunday School with us that we invited and they are some of the members from the, from the Commission of Science and Faith. We have a few doctors here with us. All of that are part of the of the group that we have of science and faith. Pastor Anchieta is also here with us and Pastor Alexandre Gueros that are participating with us in this Sunday school. We also want to inform everyone with great joy that we had a seminar of teachers and women in the Manain Chikariasika with a participation from all over, of, for women of, from all over Brazil and all over the world as well. These are all the countries that participated in this seminar with us in various locations, in various countries all over the world. And even other Manaims participated in this seminar. Some Manaims got too full that we even had to open up churches so we could fit in all of the people to watch the seminar. And this was important to us because we were reunited in one service in various parts of the world and we were all connected by this one fellowship and one doctrine we were all receiving the same teachings we also had a few events in the city of Havana in Cuba the brethren there are applying the teachings from the Sunday school there was also a seminar 
in Kazakhstan. There were various anointings and in Uzbekistan as well. There was a seminar. We also consecrated a church in Paraguay. One more city in Paraguay that we opened up a church in, which is very important, which is important to us. There was also a seminar in the city of Agua Dulce in Panama. And there, two new deacons were, were called. There, were also, there was also a baptism in the Church of Hyannis in Massachusetts. In that church, the baptism that happened there really made an impact on the church there, and it was a great blessing. There was also a, a mini-seminar in Richmond, Virginia, here in the United States. There were other seminars in, in Minas Gerais, in Brazil, also in the city of Sarzedo, in the same, in the same region. There was also a seminar of sign language in the city of Campina Grande, in Paraíba. The project of teachings, there was a, a graduation in the church of Minas Gerais as well. There was also various other consecrations and um, anniversaries for the churches in, in Brasilia. In the federal district of Brazil, 40 years of having a church there. So they were celebrating that. There was also various evangelisms, um, especially in Vitoria and Espírito Santo, also in Minas Gerais, and also Rio de Janeiro, and also evangelisms for deaf and blind in Espírito Santo Vila Velha. There were other evangelisms in São Paulo and other churches of Rio as well. There was also a, a youth um, evangelism efforts in Rio de Janeiro as well as Terra Vermelha Vila Velha and Espírito Santo. Also in Volta Redonda of Rio de Janeiro and also in Paraíba. There was various other um, evangelism services there. In Paraíba, in Souza, Católica de Rocha, Queimadas, all of these cities, various cities in Paraíba that are realizing this evangelism, evangelistic work. In Pernambuco, there was another evangelistic service. In Minas Gerais as well, there was also a other um, evangelisms in Guyana, in Pernambuco, and in other cities in Rio de Janeiro as well. Santa Luzia in Minas Gerais, there was a visit in the residence of a group of people from Haiti. Hey, um, Haitians received this visit, and pastors were present in this visit as well. Um, a few other baptisms that were important was in Campina, also in Victoria de Serra, and Espírito Santo, a big group of people were baptized there. Also in San Luis, there there was also many brethren who were baptized. Also in the city of Contagem in Minas Gerais, and also in Belo Horizonte, the 
capital of Minas Gerais. These were all um, events that happened this week, and there was many other events that happened that we just couldn't um, show up here today, but they are all on the website of um, Haju Manai and also in the Instituto Bíblico. Now we would like to give an orientation to the churches that the children, intermediates, and adolescents, they can now um, go to their classes so they can receive the teachings of the Sunday school for this morning. We suggest also that a deacon, um, pastor, or brethren could go with them so they could pray. Meanwhile, we're going to stay and we're going to start the Sunday school for this morning for the Sunday School. Um, the topics are going to be introduced by Pastor Jedochi, and we are now passing on to Pastor Jedochi right now. I greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord. The informations, we have information respecting the, the grand um, feast that was yesterday, that was our seminar with the, with the woman and the teachers, and the objectives for that, um, for that reunion that we had, for that gathering, was to our expectations for the number of people participating, including on YouTube. I don't know how many we had. However, it was 44,000 views on YouTube alone. And we'd like to tell our, our brethren that on last Thursday we received Last Wednesday, we received an orientation by the regarding the instruments used in that in that gathering. And one concern that was presented was about the church, about the presbytery, and the informations. There was a concern for many, but we want to tell the brethren to not be worried in relation to in relation to these occurrences. All of these things require repair and attention, but we are in a work of revelation, a project that is revealed by the Lord. And these customs are, are normal in the, the lives of the youth, of the households, and the families. We live in a world that's filled with infor information, and, and knowing the news and information is, is normal. Fashion-wise, with clothes, people say what they want, they wear what they want, they do what they want, but we have to be careful. And this is our concern because today the Lord has revealed to us that this gathering here of today, we have to be talking about three specific aspects. First is showing some of the aspects that information that we have to give to churches. The pastor, the pastor has a great responsibility in the governance of the church. He's not at fault if anything goes wrong in these churches because there's a lot of, of battles and difficulties that comes with being a pastor. So everything that they can do, they do. The pastor, in a general form, he has to have noble sentiments. He has, he has to be noble. So sometimes he can't 
go in and correct someone because of his positioning in the church. So, we are in a world where everything is permitted, everything is allowed, everything is allowed. They can do whatever they want, it, but we reserve this time that we are in church to dedicate to the service and to God. So during this period, we, we can't do whatever we want. We have to um, have reverence and we have to respect. Some people think that um, when they're in church, they have to show off. They have to um, be super extravagant. And it's not only the youth that are doing this or the youth that could potentially do this, but it's also all the other people of the church, older people as well, and elders. People think they, they can go to church to show off and to do whatever they want, but that is not the case. The house of the Lord has to be preserved. Why? Because the house of the Lord is not a place where you have to show off the flesh. There are other places where you could go and do that, but the church is not the place to do that. The play, um, church is not a, a butcher shop. Whatever's in fashion, whatever is popular in, um, out in the world, fashion-wise, do not mix that with inside of church and with your, your duties in church and your time in church. There are some people who want to live the way they want, and that's up to them. But when you involve the church and you try to bring that up to the presbytery, you have to be careful to not mix these things. What, whatever is sac sacred and in church that you have to have respect you cannot bring things from the world into that. Whenever you you put something like the the ICM the logo, you have to be careful to not put in in danger the 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 project of the Lord, the work of the Lord. People do a lot of things that they shouldn't do, scandalous things. But the the work of the Lord is not like this. And in other churches, we have to, we have to other churches, not just Maranatha Christian Church, has to also take this precaution. People have to respect the temple, respect the place of worship, respect the church. You are your own owner. No one can tell you what to do. But there is a place that is dedicated to the service and to the worship of the Lord. So this is what we are teaching. This is what we are worried about. This is our concern. We can't teach our kids that these that um, profane and, and saint, saintly things can mix. Whatever's in the flesh, if you want to keep showing off um, flesh, go to the beach, go go anywhere else, go to the movie theaters. You have this. You have this right. This is your own right, which is not in church. We know that things have to have their limits because because we can't. Yeah, we can't um, think we, we have to have a stage in the church and with all of these presentations. People abandoned, abandoned the world and left friends and things 
so that they could come and serve the Lord. That is the difference. We have to let go of all of these things of the world so that we can come and serve the Lord fully. We have to, we're bringing this, um, this word for all of our brethren. It's a, it's a word out of love, but we are also very serious. We are not trying to call anyone out or we're not angry. But this is our our point. This is a very strict point that we're trying to make. Deacons and, and brethren and workers, if you want to put people inside of churches to fill up churches, if you're just trying to get any person in here, then go do that somewhere else. Our job is to evangelize and to convert people, not only to try to bring them just just so we can increase numbers. It is our responsibility. You have to do your job and the government of the church will do theirs. If you want to come to church, you can come. The house of the Lord is open. But but in order to be a part of the service, we cannot have these things because you are not wh- who, whatever person that walks through the doors. You are a person that is in the pr- in the in the work of the Lord, part of the service of the Lord. And so we cannot contaminate or mix with the things of this world. Sometimes what the Holy Spirit wants us to do is not exactly what you you want to do yourself. But it, we can't come in with this mentality. Every Thursday, I receive information and all of these things about the way that we walk in the path of the Lord. But we can't be worried about other people's walk with the Lord. But I'm just saying that we are one one body, and I want to end it here saying that I don't want to get involved with anyone's life here, but the thing is we have a we have a commitment with the body and with Christ. And you are a representative of this body and of the church and of Jesus. So he's not this body that you're in, a body that is belongs to God, even though you are in this world, we cannot com- be contaminated with the things of this world. You have to give your body to Christ and let him him guide you. You can't be distracted and um, having fun with the things out in this world, but not have a commitment with God. We can't mix the things, the work of the Lord and the things of the world. We have no space inside of the project of the Lord for the things of this world. Some people do this instinctively, like they don't even notice that they do these things. But from here on out, the pastor is going to be responsible, the deacons are going to be responsible. The people who want these types of things can go live their lives somewhere else. And everyone is invited to be present, everyone everyone is invited to be a part of the service. But you have to ask yourself, what is it that God wants from your life? But we cannot put people that are interested in in the flesh and worldly things out to be at the front of the church where everyone can see or um, having a function in church. People who who do these things are going to put it on social media and they're going to try to show off but people who are truly faithful are humble and they're not trying to show off and show off themselves 
And I want to say one more final word about this is that the presbytery is a institution that has a governance where the pastors are members of the presbytery. The member is not a member of the church. He's not a um, family leader. He is part of the presbytery. Where there is a pastor, where there is an error and a um, something going wrong in the church, he is going to correct this. If he doesn't want to do this, that's his problem. And nothing is going to interfere. The family of the pastor, not um, family members and friends, is going to interfere with the project that the pastor has with the Holy Spirit. He is part of the project of the Lord. So he has to do the, the, the want and the needs of whatever the Lord wants for them. And the families of these pastors have to give the testimony of, of this as well. They have to walk with their husbands and they have to give the testimony for themselves and for God. We're not stating the names of everyone, anyone or calling anyone out. We are just saying some things that have been going going wrong. While it, as long as you don't understand the importance in the of the church and of the service and of this kingdom, as long as we don't understand this, it's going to be the pastor's fault. And the pastor is not going to call anyone out, but he's going to guide and teach the church. If we do anything wrong, kick them out. That's what the government is going to do. They're going to correct these wrongs. Our governance comes from the Holy Spirit. So we have to have every right, every every we have to do everything that we can to preserve this. And everyone has the right to this to the Holy Spirit. We have to seek and we have to seek out to it. Today we are with a group here with a brethren that are part of the science and faith. Um, and they have they've had a participation in the our seminar yesterday. And I'm going to ask a question here to one of our brethren. And he's going to answer for us. He's going to say his function in church, and he's going to answer those questions that I'm going to be asking. The first question that I'm going to be asking at whatever um, brethren that wants to answer, they're going to get up and identify themselves and answer these questions. First question is, is there a difference between science and faith? Is there a difference between science and faith? Yes or no? Science and faith. This is the question that I'm asking. And now we're going to pass it on to one of our brethren here who are going to answer this question for us. Amen. Peace of the Lord. Yes, there is a di difference between science and faith. Science, it's in within the limits of the fourth measure. It's related to reason and everything that it has to do with the man in this world, in the, in the work of creation. And science can... Um, can contradict itself in certain aspects. And it's not 100% certain every time. Faith is doesn't have this contradiction because the word of the Lord is never changing. And science and faith, many of the times, faith can be used with together with science to enhance their points like we have used many times radio manain but sometimes but the science does not interfere with the faith 
faith can utilize science, but science does not interfere with faith. The brethren that um, answered this question says that faith faith is the other question is um, faith can it confront science and um, our brethren here is going to answer I am a deacon of church in Brazil and faith is absolute therefore science cannot question faith I am asking the following if faith can confront science or even better you can you can answer if science can confront with itself with science can you confront science with science when I say about like the Big Bang for example science um, in the in the grand majority of it it only consists of theories and she often contradicts herself and Sometimes we determine something in science, but in the future we ask questions and we refute and um, contradict these things that we have already learned in science. Therefore, it's, there exists many questions and uncertainty within science, with herself, with science itself. But faith we know that it doesn't have any confrontation, these things, things that refute it or can um, contradict it. There, w there isn't any refuting faith, only science. I can only understand a revelation is if I, if I have experience, if I have experience. I cannot, with my own reasoning, try to understand revelation because revelation is an experience that comes only with the Holy Spirit and with the Lord. Reasoning, what, what that is science, is in the nature of man. It's with reasoning. But faith is divine reasoning. It's with only with the direction of the Holy Spirit and with the understanding of revelation. Can science confront science it can so science says that um, the world existed and started existing based off of the theory of the Big Bang but science itself also unsays this it says that um, the other laws of science say the different um, theories of how the world started as well. They have m multiple different things that go against the, the theory of the Big Bang. And so this is an example of how science confronts itself and contradicts and refutes itself. Uh, we have to understand that we this is what I want to um, give to the to the brethren and to, for the brethren to understand is these informations that the work of the Lord. No one can talk about this um, this topic without revelation, and we've been for 50, 50 years going through this topic and this revelation, and for faith. Faith, you can determine clearly. It has its, um, it's perfect. But with science, you have to call up a group of scientists and you have to discuss and question. Science, it's in Cronus, and um, faith is in Kairos, which is the time of the Lord. 
for you, for the youth that are taking classes in in um, university from now on out, you have to, we have to give one or two classes about this topic because it's so vast and it's so um, full of full of revelation. The, the, the blood gives life to things. In biogenesis, we have to understand that only exists life wherever there was already life. Rocks cannot produce elephants, for example. There are things that we have to understand. And whenever science tries to bring up these topics, it's to, to negate the Lord. And it's to confront with the project of the Lord. It's to um, try to try to question the project of the Lord. Everything that the man wants. If you science tries to do these things, it tries to confront um, the word of the Lord and tries to tries to refute these things. But they can't do this in their own reasoning. They don't have the power to do this. That's the difference between science and faith. Now I'm going to to mention a revelation of the Lord, something that's the most important thing of this topic. When the Lord gave information on Thursday, he showed two aspects. Aspects that were mentioned that isn't the foundation of the topic but are important for understanding. Is you some come over here and ask the question for us? We're going to ask the question. And I'm going to make a little introduction. I, I even forgot the question. All right, are we ready? All right, Jusson, all right, brethren, the question. This was a part of a, a previous teaching that we gave to the brethren. So reading the, the text in Luke 12, what were the recommendations of the Lord Jesus for this moment of many, um, of many excuses? State some of the aspects. So in Luke, when it talks in, in chapter 12, in chapter 12, verse 14, where it talks about the, or talks about the Lord Jesus, and in Luke, Luke 14, Luke 14, 16 to 21, we're fixing here our question, so in the Gospel of Luke 14, 16 to 21, were the rec what were the recommendations from the Lord Jesus for this moment with so many excuses? So there were three excuses or people that were um, they were giving excuses as to why they couldn't go to the feast. So what were the recommendations 
from the Lord for this moment. So what, what did the Lord say? What was his recommendation? In Luke 14, 16 to 21. And it actually goes to the verse 24, not just 21. 16. Lucas 14, 21 e 24. Você é de novo, 21 e 24, isso. Muito bem. Então, 21 e 24. Luke 21 e 24. 16, versículo 16 e 24. Para facilitar aos irmãos, estamos então restringindo a pergunta aos três aos quatro versículos 21 22 so this question is going to you're going to find the answer to this question in these verses we're going to cite a few aspects of these recommendations that the Lord Jesus put in the parable Very well, brethren. Now we're going to state some of the answers for this question to make it easier for the brethren at the churches. So one of the excuses were, um, I got married, therefore I cannot go. So this, this getting married, I want to say an aspect of it is, of the field, um, the parable of the field was that he wanted to see the field, then he wanted to... Um, and then he eventually got married to the field. So it's when you start seeing the things of the world, you get committed to these things, and then you get married to these things. Then you give them more value, which is um, which is kind of relates to this parable that we're learning today. So the the poor, the blind, the lame, and the maimed. These are us. These represent us. And um, the, the master says, force them to come in. When we have um, any difficulties in our lives, when we, something goes wrong, in order for the, the man to be committed to eternity and want to go to eternity, they have to force him inside. And, and the judge, there was, says, for I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. This is the judgment. This is the final, um, the final say of the Lord. The blind, the paralytic, blind are those who don't know the, the way. They don't know that Jesus is the way. Those who, um, the ones who can't walk, the paralytic, are the ones who can't walk correctly, can't walk straight in the path of the Lord. So these are people who have difficulty in their walk. Um, we see how the Lord does things. Those that the man, um, the, the people that the, the man rejects, the Lord does not reject. People with um, deficiency, people who can't walk correctly, one time, um, sometimes they're in line walking straightly, and other times they're not. They're walking all, they're all walking all wrong. These are the type of people that man rejects, but the Lord does not reject. 
seu corpo. And these are the lame. On people who are lame, they do not step firmly. Um, one day they understand the, the project of the Lord and the work of the Lord, and the next they don't. The church has to understand that in this time, these are the people who are most like us. So the, when he finds these people in this way and they accept the Lord, they're the ones who are going to be receiving eternity. My brethren, the, the revealed word, the living word, is placed in the right place in the right time. So, and this is a moment of that we are rushing. So tonight, the the suggestion for the for the message is, come quickly. We we are come quickly. Call them quickly. Call them with rush. There is a necessity for a rushing and for quickness. There is a necessity to integrate different types of people in this moment. We are seriously thinking of this. Is it hard? It's very hard, but it's not impossible. The church right now, they are the fruits, new and old. The church of today's day and age are going to collect the fruits. And we are producing fruits in this moment. And it's a result of um, the a fellowship in the body, of prayer. So the suggestion for the message tonight is Luke 14, 21. This suggestion is perfect because it's talking about the the qui um, come quickly, the rush of the Lord in this in these last moments. Um, the, the part where it says go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city. The cities. And the reason for these for this invitation is because people are extremely um, necessitated and they need the Lord in these mo in these last moments. So we can use these different aspects of the verse to um, and these different examples of people to exemplify people out in the world that are needing Jesus in these last moments and um, the rush of the Lord to receive them. We're going to um, end the transmission here now, um, giving everyone and greeting everyone with the peace of the Lord. Amen. Now we're going to sing a song while the children um, come back to their seats.
God. Do the children have a song now? This is not the song. We're a little confused. We're getting a little confused now. Let's let's start again. Let's put the right song. So now we're gonna just listen to the children. What is the name of the song? The name of the song is I Want to Be the Salt of the, the, the Earth. Tinha? É. Vamos lá. This song was perfect for yesterday. We talked about the moon. All right, let us all be standing now. We're going to pray for the children. They could be kneeling in this moment, the intermediate and adolescents as well. Pastor Sabado. Lord Jesus, we, we ask for your grace for your children and communities and adolescents. We ask in this moment you, that you can preserve the salvation in their lives, Lord, preserve their hearts so that your Holy Spirit can be influencing each and every one of their moves every day. Um, bless their family members and so that you can be providing the spiritual and physical resources that they need every, each and every day. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, in your name, we say the marvelous grace of our Savior, the love of God, and our eternal Father, and the eternal consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured upon all of us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. Tonight, our sh service is going to be at 7.30. Um, we ask that the everyone can be praying throughout this day, praying for our visitors, um, those who have been reasons for our, our prayer. And if you are feeling in your heart that you should invite someone, um, then pray and ask the Lord so that they can receive a, a blessing. Anything else? Um, we're going to have a, a short meeting with the group A. Today after church, we're going to have a, a, a meeting um, with all of the people who have function in church. All of the people who um, have a function in church. We're going to talk about um, a few things that we have to put have to put um, a few things that we have to correct and we're going to talk about we're going to talk with the, the deacons the workers the praise group instrument instrumentalists all of these people so we can um, correct these little things that have been happening that we cannot allow to continue to happen and so after church today everyone will remain in their seats and we're going to um, have a conversation we're going to talk